another day, another boxcar watching episode. This is the seventh episode of the year, and let's skim through these four games since there's just been four games on today's slate of games. Well, we start with the Wizards defeating the Pistons, moving to three and one, which doesn't bode well with my <laughs> preseason predictions. But let's let's talk about some of this game. Bo Boyan Bogdanovic continues to be great for the Pistons, great trade, but they're just not ready yet, obviously. And Kate, Kate Cunningham has been disappointing to start the season. He has not played that great of a season so far. His stats, let me look at them. His stats have been not great. His impact has not been overall felt as well as it was during the second half of last season. He's been averaging 19, 4 and 6 essentially, but it just doesn't feel as good as it felt last season. As for the rest of the Pistons, Killian Hayes is... They just need to get rid of him or... I don't know, he, he should not be playing anymore, in my honest opinion. And Jalen Duran has... Conti the, that's the biggest positive still for the Pistons, that Jalen Duran looks pretty solid. Jaden Ivey looks pretty solid overall for his rookie season, and they'll, they'll just lose more than I expected them to, since I expected Kate to take a leap. As for the Wizards, they continue their great start to the season with another victory and their overall team play has been really great you can see bradley beal play 22 minutes at 13 points the wizards continue the great start of the season with three on one record and their overall team play since bradley beal had to leave during the first quarter or after the first quarter i'm not sure actually i don't remember even seeing it during watching the possessions and he returned afterwards with he had some back soreness back problems he had just 13 points but Kyle kuzma picked up the slack with 25 Porzingis continues his pretty solid start to the scene with 20 points. Rui Hachimura off the bench continues to be good, and Will Barton also. Just a solid time for the Wizards, and I just want to point out Johnny Davis still looks not like an NBA player and a lottery pick. <clears throat> the prime game of the first slate of games has been the Mavericks and the Pelicans, with Pelicans winning without Zion Williams and Brandon Ingham, as the Mavs shot 30% from the three, a lot of wide open looks, uh, Reggie Bullock was especially out there just missing everything during uh, during the fourth quarter, he played 35 minutes when he was just bad. Dorian Finney-Smith has not had the good game yet, Javel McGee was solid I guess, but it felt like his defense was not good. Spencer Dinwiddie is still great, his ISOs are so good, he had 24 points but he was minus 15, so the runs were made when he was on the floor, but it didn't feel like that when you watch the game, maybe I should, I just didn't see it, but from my point of view, he, he didn't look like, you know, he was the problem out there. Luka, 53% from the field, 15% from the three, maybe too many three-pointers for Luka, especially, as, as always, he shoots the last, you know, the game-winning three is always from the left top corner, let, let me just showcase it. Well, prior to this, Luka missed five threes in a row. And, I mean, five. <clears throat> Prior to the game-winning try, Luka missed four threes in a row, and he decides to shoot his classic. But once again, gets it from the inbound, goes to the left top, and the sidestep free. And this time he misses it. I'm not sure what Luka's stats are from that spot overall in there, but, well, he missed it today, and he wasn't going from three-point line, but for my fantasy, he was he was perfect. <laughs> and Christian Wood continues his sensational start to the season. As for the Pelicans, who played, obviously, without Zion, and without Brandon Ingram, who's in concussion protocols, they were sensational, and that's exactly, this, this type of game exactly proves why I was so excited for them. And, you know, they sort of feel like, in a way, like the Phoenix Suns after the bubble. When, you know, last season after the playoffs, they got their, you know, identity, they figured out what they want to do, they, you know, felt like they just know now. And with Zion back, it feels like they, it, he can take them to another level, similar to trading for CP3 with the Suns. And, I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Eight players in double digits, sensational. The Dyson Daniels was minus 18 on the game, but when he, you know, watching him so overall play, he, he look out there that he belongs out there, and it's kind of sad to me that you know he got torched when they were when he was there. But hey, sometimes it happens. But we have to point out obviously Trey Murphy, 100% from the field, 100% from the three point line, and from the free throw line, 22 points. 
you know, Valen Tunister team points. They were they are just a solid overall team. That's what the most important thing. Their overall team is great. It just depends if Brandon Ingram and Zion can be healthy. They have a high ceiling. Next up we have the Clippers and the Thunder. Well, Clippers without Kawhi, without Paul George. And well, Kawhi is out two games with precautionary things about this. Neo already, which doesn't vote well for you know, anyone, but they are taking the cautious road, and I guess, I guess we'll see. Uh, I mean, you can't say anything about it because we don't know how the operation went and everything. But it's so weird and scripted and everything. I just hope Kawhi is, you know, fine, and it's not more of a mental thing with him, since you know, back in Santa Antonio, he didn't trust the doctors out there, and it could even be, you know, mental. Who knows? I don't want to put it on him, obviously, just like mental uh, excuse or you know that he's mentally you know not well or anything but it could very well be since you know it's it's really rough with injuries and it has to be draining on the body and on the mental i just hope he finds a footing and he he is well this season overall and yeah the clippers just struggle without him Reggie Jackson just 23% from the field, no one Paul 30% from the field. If it's a Zubac 10 and 14, 15 points off the bench, John Wall for a solid outing, 19 minutes, but uh, they just need to get healthy and comfortable. They're gonna be rough to start the season overall. Uh, OKC won their first game, Aaron Wiggins took 14 shots, 11 points. Trey Mann with the best game of the season for him so far, 25, 2 and 4. Shea Gilgis Alexander played, which makes me happy that he gets to play. 33 points, 5 rebounds, 8 assists, 50% from the field, 2 my threes. He's just such a great player. It's such a shame he has to run in OKC right now, but hopefully they'll be, you know, better eventually. And can... can Kenry Williams, 10 points. Uh, Mike Muscala, 8 and 10 off the bench. Good for them to get their first win. And the last game of the day, my Warriors getting torched by the Suns, as our defense continues to be very bad to start the season. Andrew Wiggins had his first bad game of the season, 16, 6 and 3 with not efficient shooting. Draymond looks really great out there, 14, 8 and 5, 3 steals, even though he had 5 turnovers, he looks, he just looks healthy, he looks good, which is both well for the overall future. Uh, Clay got ejected, uh, which I don't actually know what started overall, I still have not seen what started overall, but then he started talking to Devin Booker and got ejected, which maybe he couldn't, shouldn't have been, it's up to debate, I don't know, the refs were kind of very weird last, you know, game, but, this game, but, what do I know, Steph, not a good game, 21, 7 and 8, kind of stat, but it, in the end missed two free throws, which is a shame, James Wiseman, I mean, he looks great offensively, but I don't know, man. I'm, I'm scared for Big Jim. And, you know, a lot of people are picking on him. There are the stats when, you know, he's with anyone, any player in the lineup, it's just a negative net rating, which is, is kind of crazy to see, but it is what it is. Jordan pulled 17 points off the bench. Moses Moody at least played 25 minutes, 13 points. Kuminga, 4 points in 15 minutes. It was just an ugly game for my Warriors. As for the Suns, well, they made a lot of tough shots, a lot of easy shots, they just were ready for this game more than my Warriors. And, I mean, the first half was a sensational basketball overall, it was a high tempo basketball, some trash talk, it was great, but after the clay ejection it just got out of hand quickly. And Michael Bridges with the best game of his season so far, 17-6-2. Cam Johnson has still been struggling in the starting role. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, 16 and 14, but ah uh, man, I was not impressed with Ayton. He always gets the matchup he wants, but his touch and his post moves, they just look so bad, or at least today they did look bad, I don't know. David Booker continues his MVP start to the season 34, 2 and 7, on 52% from the field. Chris Paul had a good game finally for the Suns after I trash talk him in every video. He obviously plays good against my Warriors, 16, 7 and 9. And J Jack Landale was out there bullying Moses Moody, 17 and 7. Well, that makes it for today. There were three blows today, but uh, the Warriors and Suns were, was sensational until the clay ejection. And, well, two blowouts and the Pelicans upsetting the Mavs without Zion and Brandon Ingram, which were a sensational game overall. Tomorrow's slate of games should be pretty fun also. Magic look for their first win against the Cavs with Donovan Mitchell. Hawks play again. 2-1 Horn, Hornets against the Knicks, Sixers Raptors should be fun, Nets Bucks should be fun, 
Pacers Bulls could also be very fun. Devo Spurs. I mean, there's a lot of fun game tomorrow. I'm gonna cover them all, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.